Yeah, you're right. Same white noise generator, different spot. Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. That's right, I'm back in the Anchorage. Totally different than yesterday morning. It is just a little after 5 a.m. right now. Starting to see pre-dawn turn on just slightly. So soon we will be able to turn this light off. Yeah, you're right. It is a much calmer morning than yesterday. There's like almost no wind. It's at one. Very calm water out there. Nothing crazy about the current right now. Though I'm sure it's strong. Yesterday morning, it started out kind of strong and just got stronger and stronger with that wind. Yeah, different morning, different spot, same anchorage, same ship. It's been in here for like three days now. Come on. Same bait as yesterday, different bag. Dropped this earlier this morning, skipjack. So what I got left in the freezer are bags like this that don't really make sense when I'm by myself, which I am this morning. Yesterday we had a bag that I dropped that had the same amount of skipjack in it, but there was two of us in. We actually went through the whole thing. So, I doubt that I'll go through this whole bag this morning. So that means I don't want to waste it. Therefore, I got to fish, fish it fast. So hopefully we can get away with more than one session with it before it goes totally soft. It's been frozen for quite some time. So, yeah, I'm cutting two different size baits. We're going to go with a head piece and then a smaller piece because we're doing the same setup as yesterday. Maybe you didn't see that video. I will do a quick rig rundown. A very quick rig rundown. Mainline, 80 pound braid, four ounce lead, sinker slide, 50 pound mono leader, nine knot octopus hook. Here we go, put that on. I'm gonna go through the bottom lip, kind of stubborn, and then through the top nose plate. It's good that it's stubborn. It means that it'll hang out for a good long time. Down here on the next rig, everything's just like the first rig, except for the hook. It is a six aught octopus hook. And we are going to put that piece on there, obviously. Boom, make sure there's no scales on the barb or the tip. Yeah, you're right. Out here on the river, we have a slight fog this morning because overnight we had our wind change directions it started to come out of the north a bit of a cold front but not so much of one that it's a big problem right but enough of one to create this fog this morning it is not out of the north right now it will be a warm day so i chose this spot because i was so unimpressed with yesterday's video i just kept hitting something like first something big drifting on the bottom caught my lines and then the current was changing and it, i kept catching the lead ledge over there it's a little different here not so much the same as far as like a a, a catchy ledge or sticky ledge or whatever you want to call it it's going to be mostly sand not quite as deep but deep enough there should should be something here the last time i fished this spot i did catch quite a few cats but they were all small we'll see what we can do this morning fairly confident that we're going to do something this morning even though it's shallower than the spot i was at yesterday it's not really that time of year where you have to necessarily be in deep water to find cats we're still at that point where they're going to be coming up into shallow air areas to feed because you know some may have spawned when we hit 65 we're at 68 with our water temp in the river 75 is like optimal but they can start spawning at 65 degrees so we're not quite in one of those mornings where fish aren't going to feed because they're spawning but the closer we get to the full moon, the more we might find that. However, I think we're gonna find hungry fish. We got both baits out now. 
Last time I was here, I was fishing a shorter rod closer in with smaller bait, gut pocket, I believe. But I did have a big rod with a big bait out there, pretty much in the position where this big bait is. And I did see some interest in that. Not a lot, but some. So I wasn't here very long for that. Maybe two and a half hours or less. We're going to be here just a little longer than the first time I fished this spot. So, yeah, hopefully we do better. Look at this. Same issue, different snag. So I've been here roughly for an hour. I've seen a little bit of a bite on the smaller bait. I thought I would pull the baits up starting with this big head piece I want to decrease my lead from a four down to a three. Oh, maybe that was the drop-off because the line did not break it just slowly came out maybe I'm too far back from it here therefore I can't get the proper angle to pull up it even though I'm holding the rod tip high in the air when I try to do that, I'm still pulling my lead into it and coming down with a greater force with that stick instead of cutting through my fingers by doing it by hand got me out. So possibly decreasing the lead might make, it, make this easier to deal with coming over that ledge or coming through it also it's going to increase my casting distance and that's the main reason why i want to do it so look at this we still whoa got you wet maybe still got the head piece let's get rid of this four ounce keep going keep going we'll see how far you can go how far can you go? That is probably his limit. It's not a big fish. But that is the first serious fish here at this spot. I've had a few other bites. Nothing on the big bait. It is maybe 645. We've been out for about 15 minutes with the three ounce leads this small bait was in a different place this time first this morning it was over here kind of over this way kind of stuck there all right so we're at that mud drop off Let's see if we can gently horse him up yeah i'm i just don't want to lose him right here Man. I'm backing off. I'm going to see if he'll get out of there. He's still there. Can't. So in this situation, if you're really worried about losing them, you can just give it some slack line like this, close the bale, and watch. Now, i got to do a battery swap anyway, so it's a good time for this. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Gotcha. Just had to give him a little time to get into a better place to let me get him over. It's not a very big fish. You bought a fat for this. So this is the size pretty much on average that I was getting the last time I tried this spot. It's got me thinking, thinking about changing my mind about stuff this morning. Let's see if I have the same amount of trouble as I did yesterday here. There's no wind still less current but the current's stronger here than where we just were 
there's a lot of mullet coming through here right now so that might be something good to think about that might be a good thing to come here good reason this time with the big bait it's a big body piece over here the small baits a small body piece at spots like this where it changes on a daily basis or can change sometimes using a different lead heavier or lighter from one day to another can be what you need to do it might help us get over the the ledge not so many hang-ups we are going to drift a little more, but we have less current today because we don't have the wind affecting it. One thing I noticed yesterday, there was a lot of big trash, all kinds of things floating in the river going down. There's a bit of that today, not as much as yesterday. Ray was here with me. He was throwing a 12 foot rod. He was having a little better luck hitting fish than me but still having problems coming back in. And at some point in yesterday's session, something big moving on the bottom caught both my lines and just started pulling. That can happen sometimes. You know, you think when stuff's flowing down the river, big debris that it's on the surface, it can be down below the surface as well. Are you there? Did I run out here too fast? I don't feel anything. Oh, decided to bring it up to check it. Got stuck, something cut through the line. I was pulling this up just to, to check it and something started pulling back. I had no idea there was a fish on here. I'm surprised. I'm just surprised. I had no idea. I just wanted to make sure the bait was all right and cast it back out. Whoa, I didn't think you were this big to be putting up such a fuss like this. Oh, that's why. Well, when that starts happening, gaff top aren't far behind. His tail has been cut. Best way to pick these up. Fingers around right outside the, where the eyeballs are. Not in the eyeballs. And we're just gonna... There we go. He should turn around eventually. Looks cool in the water up here because the water's kind of clean up here. Not so much when you get out there. He'll figure it out. There he goes. Ah. Ah. Left and right. Left down to nothing. Left down to one now. Check this out, guys. This eel is fresh. The rigor mortis hasn't settled in. Was not here yesterday morning. Can't stand it when people do this. They catch an eel, don't want to deal with it, cut the line, and let it die. Back to this. Stuck again. Oh, never been so bad here. All of a sudden, it came out. Spark plug. Yep. That'll be bait for another time soon. This has been like when you don't learn. When I eventually come back to this spot or this area, definitely will bring the 12 footers. But yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and sharing and commenting, and I will see you next time.